Let's get right to our special guest. Ken Langone, of course, is Invimit Associates chairman, the co-founder of Home Depot, and the chairman of the NYU Langone Health Board. Um, Ken, let's maybe start even with Pfizer, with what we just heard, because you and I have talked about Pfizer in the past. The COVID vaccines that they created were so revolutionary at the time and really freed people up and made yeah. them feel like they could go back out. But now it's really costing the company. Well, because there's a big hole to fill. You know, we haven't got the crisis we had. We haven't got the demand we, that they had then. On the other hand, you know, Pfizer is an amalgamation of a lot of drug companies. Think of who's in there. Upjohn, Pharmacia, Warner Lambert. Uh, there's about seven or eight of them in there. And, and frankly, I think they never really got their arms around consolidation at levels like research, for example. You know, there's so much redundancy there, and, and I'm not throwing a rock at anybody, but I look at what John Lechleiter did at Eli Lilly and look at the results. And what he did was to simply say, we're not cutting back on R&D, but we're going to focus and we're going to make sure that we get more bang for the buck than possible. Right. And they did it. Uh, I feel bad for Pfizer. 20 years ago, Pfizer was presumed to be the company in the healthcare industry. Uh, and, and we have a wonderful relationship with Bill Steer. Bill Steer was a chairman. When he ran it, it was spectacular. Bill has, was on the NYU Langone board, and he's been incredibly generous to us. But there was a focus. And I think, you know, these handoffs, these management handoffs are tricky. And, and there were a couple of handoffs at Pfizer that, frankly, didn't work. Now, I, I'm bragging. Look at, look at the companies that I'm involved with and the handoffs and how they've gone. Most recent one is, is Parker Hannafin, Jenny Palmentier. Mm -hmm. Seamless. From Don, Tom Williams to her. Uh, 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 Craig Manier to Ted Decker at Home Depot. Mm -hmm. uh, John Lechleiter to David Ricks at Lilly. Now, the irony of it is, it was pretty much no surprise. The irony is, look at the robust succession plan that GE had when Jack was there, and it blew up. So that, that transition, that handoff, is very, very critical. And how, I, how much of this, though, is a, a transition handoff with Albert Borla, or how much of it is just he was chasing COVID and moving things at such an incredible pace to focus on the COVID vaccines that maybe there wasn't time to focus on the rest? Look, I, I think their R&D budget is something like 8 or $9 billion. I don't know exactly, but you got plenty of room to do a lot of things in here besides one thing. Yeah. So, and believe me, I'm not going to throw a rock at the guy because running a drug company is a very complicated, challenging thing. But I, I look, I, I'm back to Lilly again. I, by the way, and mind you, Nothing's cheap until I own it, so I'm pitching. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. But anyway, I think Lilly will be the first trillion dollar drug company in history. Why? Their pipeline. And God bless John Lechleiter. In the dark years when they were, everything was falling off the cliff, he was firm in his commitment to spending the money on R&D and, and protecting the dividend. We didn't get any increases in the dividend. Right. Now, that's been made up. We've had, I think, five years of 15% increases. But John put the horses in place, and they got a team out there with David Ricks and, and, and uh, Dan Skabronsky, who runs research, and I guess he's got all strategy now. It's all about the people. I don't know, I don't know how you address Pfizer's problems now, because it's, it's, it's huge. It's spread right. out. It's Eli Lilly, you've, you've, you've been... That was your top pick. I'm just looking back in 2015. How, how long have you been in Lilly? I sold a little device. The first device company they ever bought, IVAC. Mm -hmm. uh, we sold that to Lilly. We closed November 30th, 1977. <laughs> so I've owned the stock for almost 46 years. There were two crises in the company's history. One, they had a drug called Oriflex that nine people died from, not because it was a bad drug, but rather because... Uh, doctors misprescribed it. And the other time was when they bought the pharmacy benefit management company, and that was not one of their most brilliant moves, but the stock was down 17% in one day, and I happened to have a few bucks in my pocket, so we bought more. So uh, from 2002 to 2018, Eli Lilly's stock did nothing, absolutely nothing. 
Counting that, going back 46 years, the 46 years I've owned it, counting the dividends, it's compounded at 14.8% a year. Okay? I got a better one than that, though. Since September of 1981, what's the number one performing stock in the S&P 500? And the answer is? E, uh, Home Depot. I was going to guess Home Depot. <laughs> 28% a year compounded for all those years. It's unbelievable. I'd rather be lucky than right. smart. Believe me, anybody out there, I'm lucky. I'm not smart.